Unreal supports a great deal of texture formats, including BMP, PNG, TGA, JPEG, compressed DDS textures, and even HDR image maps. The most common formats used are BMP, TGA, and PNG. With TGA files, you get alpha channel support when using 32-bit or RGBA TGA files. PNG files have pre-multiplied alpha support, but are generally not used for most situations. Stick with TGA for the best alpha results. When exporting an asset, the textures used by the asset's materials will automatically be imported into Unreal, assuming that both the material type is supported and the textures are supported formats. Now, Datasmith does a great job of automatically converting textures to a supported format as well. Of course, you can also import textures by themselves. When creating textures for Unreal, keep in mind the max resolution is 8K or 8192 by 8192. Keep your texture sizes a power of 2. Otherwise, Unreal won't generate MIP maps, which are smaller versions of the texture that get used as the camera moves further away from an object. For instance, if we half the max resolution, we get 4096 by 4096 or 4K, a power of 2 texture. But textures don't have to be square, they can be rectangular textures, and those will work just fine. If you are working with a lot of large textures, such as 8K and 4K textures, it might be good to compress your textures using DDS format. We'll look into that in the next segment. It's also a good idea to avoid using alpha channels too often, as they can greatly add to the amount of memory a texture takes up. Just make sure you're not using a texture that has an alpha channel, unless the material of the object actually does use the alpha channel. Lastly, let's look at gamma and HDR image maps used for lighting. Generally, you should use a linear workflow and all textures should be sRGB format with a gamma of 2.2. However, HDR images should have a gamma of 1.0. Generally, the best way to use an HDR image for lighting in Unreal is to import the texture on its own and apply it as a cube map to a skylight. Once you've imported your textures into Unreal, generally done for you when you export your 3D assets, there's still a little setup to do on them to ensure they are being displayed correctly and with as little impact on performance as possible. These options aren't presented on import but are instead found in the texture editor window. Let's open that now. On the right, you'll get some basic info about the texture such as resolution, whether it has an alpha and what format it is. Below, we have some options that need to be set. A lot of these options will already be set up for us when the texture is imported but it's still a good idea to check and make sure they're set correctly. Compression settings allows us to choose from a drop-down the type of compression we want to use for this texture. So this texture is a diffuse texture, so we'd want to use the diffuse texture compression settings. If it was a normal map, obviously we'd choose the normal map compression. Texture group allows us to assign this texture to a group. And by grouping textures together, it basically allows for more control over texture memory. So this is a performance saving option here. These two options should be chosen by default for you, but if you want to come in here and make changes to them, you certainly can. And then finally, we have sRGB. Obviously, if we're using sRGB textures, we want to make sure this is checked. Again, this will be checked by default for you automatically. If you need to come in here, though, and uncheck it for some reason, you could do that here. Obviously, a normal map should not have sRGB checked, nor should an HDR image. Now that we've finished preparing and importing all of our assets, and ensuring textures have all been properly set up, we're ready to begin working on turning the scene into a real-time walkthrough. Congratulations! But before you do, let's go over a few common issues you might encounter with your scene in Unreal and how you can go about fixing them. 